Now I'm going to show you how to use an Excel table of the study characteristics and outcomes to identify patterns uh, within studies. Um, and this is particularly, say, for subgroup analysis, um, etc. And I've already determined that because of the heterogeneity among these studies, I can't really create uh, a pooled effect size. That is to say, a meta-analysis isn't going to make much sense. That doesn't mean I give up. I'm just going to do a narrative synthesis, but I still need to find patterns. And sometimes it's easier to use this technique to find those patterns. So see, you can see here that I've got my uh, table and I've got uh, all my different pieces of information that I've extracted from the studies, or the ones that are relevant, um, in different columns in uh, my Excel spreadsheet and then over on the right here I've got the four different outcomes that I'm examining in my systematic review. So I'm, I'm looking at BMI, Ponderal Index, BMI Z-scores, and Fat Mass. Now what I um, have done here is I've also highlighted, this is a simplified uh, version of my outcomes. I have a more detailed outcomes table, but this outcomes, uh, the outcomes that I have here are basically reduced to did they find a statistically significant finding or not. And so what I did was, you, you can see here, say for BMI, they have a statistically significant outcome and I just highlighted that, put it in bold and, I'll well, not highlight it, but change the font color and I did that so it pops out to me. Um, whereas up here I have BMI outcomes that were all non-significant. This one was significant. Now what I want to do is I want to use Excel sort function in order to see if I see any patterns where my significant outcomes fall. So let's say according to my data plan, the first thing I want to sort on is going to be my study design. You can see here I have four different types of study designs across these 22 studies, uh, mostly cross-sectional but some prospective cohort, um, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this column then I'm going to go up to data and then I'm going to go and sort ascending. <clears throat> now here's something important. Excel is going to pop up this little warning that says do you want to expand the selection? Well I certainly do because what will happen is if I don't expand the selection it's just going to sort within this column but that's going to mix up all my data. Basically I want to sort the columns, all to, uh, the rows together. So I'm going to Make sure expand selection is clicked and then I'll click sort and you can see that now my uh, studies have been rearranged so I have my cross-sectional studies up on top then down below, oops, too far down below, down below I have my prospective cohort and at the very end my retrospective cohort and my trend study. So what I want to look for now is I want to look down through the different outcomes to see do my significant outcomes, my significant finding, do they tend to cluster uh, within one type of study? Well, so for BMI I see, well, most, almost all the studies except for two didn't find any significant relationships uh, between uh, the intake, this is a question is looking at fruit juice intake and um, adiposity in children, and what I find there's only two studies, they both happen to be cross-sectional, see here the Denison and the Mackeys, but this doesn't, mm, this doesn't really tell me much of anything. The pattern that I'm seeing here is it really doesn't seem to be much of, a, of an effect here. Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any difference in terms of uh, adiposity or BMI uh, based on how much fruit juice a kid drinks. Um, the same for ponderal index, which is a measure of stature. I see a couple of significant findings up top, a non-significant. Then I have a significant finding down in uh, the prospective cohort study. Um, so I'm seeing mostly out of the four studies that report on Pondal Index, three of them are statistically significant, but there doesn't seem to be any real clear pattern in terms of the study design. And then I'll look at the same thing with BMI Z-score. Fat mass I really don't have to pay much attention to because you'll notice none of those findings were statistically significant. So, well, I, you know, I've, I've done that analysis, haven't really found any difference in terms of the study design. Now let's say that according to my study plan, the next uh, uh, study characteristic or sample characteristic that I'm going to um, examine or do a heterogeneity analysis on is sex. So again, I'm going to highlight this column 
and I'm going to go up and I'm going to sort and then I'm going to certainly expand my selection boom okay done now you'll notice uh, most of the studies include both boys and girls um, only a couple at the bottom uh, report only on females and they don't really report much in the way of outcomes so that doesn't help me much and then I have a couple of studies that didn't report um, what their um, didn't report sex that's not such a good thing but um, here's now here's something important that I notice um, now some studies report a single outcome for all the kids in the study other studies interestingly enough will create separate models or report outcomes separately or subgrouped by sex. So you can see here in the field study, right here, um, they reported separately for boys and girls. And notice that they found a significant BMI Z-score uh, association for girls, but not for boys. Uh, look at the Labuda study, I noticed the exact same pattern. Relationship for girls, but not for boys. I go down to the Tabor study. Look at that. Significant for girls, not significant for boys. So here's an interesting pattern. All of the studies for my BMI Z score outcomes that find a significant relationship between fruit juice intake and um, adiposity, and in this case BMI Z score, only find the relationship with girls. So here I found a clear pattern um, in my outcomes. Uh, and this is something that I would then report and tell the story on. Okay, of all the um, BMI outcomes, only uh, studies that reported separately on girls and boys, uh, they found that um, BMI Z was significantly, statistically significantly associated with fruit juice intake only in girls. And then, of course, I would go on to uh, give my reader a sense of well, how big was that difference, etc. But here you can see how I've used um, this uh, tool here, and I could go on, um, and I could do the same thing for race, ethnicity, I could look at age group, uh, differentiate by whether it's a national sample, etc. So whatever, you know, um, I've planned out according to my analysis plan for analyzing the heterogeneity within, among the studies, uh, then I can go and just continue to do this and look for patterns in my data. Um, so even though I'm not doing a meta-analysis, I'm still sorting my data uh, in my uh, data. This is downloaded from my data extraction sheet. Um, I've sorted this to be able to find patterns in, uh, among the studies.